Hello friends, it's Lex at Lex Reads. Welcome. I know we haven't been in this part of the house for some months. Welcome to downstairs. Um, the people I live with, aka my family, I don't know why I said the people I live with, my family, they're all gone right now, which hasn't happened um, since March, you know. <laughs> so I figured why not come downstairs, have a change of scenery. My living room's in the background. Um, yeah. But without further ado, I have, what, 12 or 13 books to get through for June, so we're just going to scoot on into my June 2020 wrap-up. Let's do it. Right before we hop on into the wrap-up, I'm going to just remind you what my four bingo prompts were. So I had read a poetry collection, which I accomplished, read a classic, which I did not accomplish, read some science fiction, which I accomplished, and read an LGBT plus book, which I accomplished. All right, all right, all right. I'm gonna talk about the two arcs that I read in June. First, I have a vlog where I read all of my June arcs, so I will link that down below in case you wanna watch it. Um, the first arc that I read this month was The Lost City of Heracleon by Bruce Livingstone. Um, it's a graphic novel. I have an e-arc, so I'll pop up a picture here for you. This is a fantasy science fiction graphic novel. We follow two kids who go on this... Ed I seriously still don't know how to describe this book. Okay, so they go on this adventure. Um, one of their fathers has been missing for a good while, some years. And they go on this adventure to find him. They get mixed up with some of the old gods. Um, there's a war. I gave it two out of five stars. The art style is really, really cool. It's really reminiscent of, reminiscent of mid 20th century science fiction art. Like think kind of like comic book art, but the story just really didn't do it for me. If you want to know more about that, I recommend you check out my Goodreads review where I'm a little bit more coherent. Moving on, the second arc that I read in June, that's the month we're talking about, um, was The Anti-Rajuni Pact by Kitty Wismer, who is a booktuber, and I've been a fan of hers, Kate's Book Date, for years and years and years and years, and so when she said that... Um, arcs were up for request on NetGalley. I jumped on that. I really, really liked it. I gave it four out of five stars. That book follows Meredith, who is a very shy high school senior. She's just trying to keep her head down, get through the year. Um, but her and her friend made a pact, an anti-virginity pact, to, that both of them would lose their virginity by the time they graduated high school. And it gets circulated around the school and turns her life upside down. She is also the daughter of a preacher, so that goes over, well, it's an adventure. It was a really good read. It was really poignant. I adored it. I liked it so much. I recommend. Four out of five stars. Oh, and uh, The Lost City of Heracleon was my science fiction for my bingo board. Pop that up right there so you can look at my blue board Blue board? Red board. So you can look at my red board and see where we're at on my red board. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So then moving on um, for the, what is it called? For the Queer Lit Readathon, which I epically failed at, um, I wrapped up one of the things I read last month because it started on the 31st and I recorded that on the 31st and I finished it before I wrapped it up. But the other thing that I read um, is You're the Most Amazing Thing That Happened, which is a poetry collection. Let me look up who it's by. I do not remember the name off the top of my head. Which, this one, I popped it up on the screen already. This one, five out of five stars, absolutely phenomenal. Um, yes, You're the Most Beautiful Thing That Happened by Arisa White, which was phenomenal. If you like poetry, I really recommend. There's some interesting chats about race. It's also queer. I read it for the Queer Lit Readathon. It's beautiful. If you like poetry, 
you should check it out. Um, one of my favorite chat books, poetry collections, whatever you want to call it, that I've read in a very, very long time, if in my whole life. So that was phenomenal. Five out of five stars. Can't recommend it enough. Um, that was the only other thing except for the avant-garde that I finished during the week of Queer Lit Readathon. Moving on to the Read Your Gaze Readathon, I read a couple more things for that. I was a little bit more successful. The first thing I read for the Read Your Gaze Readathon is um, Beware the Kitten Holly, which is the Lumberjanes Volume 1, which I have the Lumberjanes um, on ebook. So I will pop up a picture here. This one was adorable. It's so cute. I give it four out of five stars. These books are like, fa are like lightly fantastical camp stories, kind of. So we follow a group of strong lady types. Um, I do believe at least one of them is trans. We got some queer going on. It's it's a very LGBT plus friendly like queer people just chilling and being queer kind of vibes, but um, it's at this camp for strong lady types, um, and they get in this cabin, they get in all kinds of wacky adventures with some fantastical creatures, and oh, it's so much fun. Four to five stars. If you like graphic novels, I think you should pick it up. It's just fun. It's just a fun, quick, breezy read. The characters are adorable. They're all, you know, little girls, so we love that. And then I read my favorite book so far this year. That is We Unleashed the Merciless Storm by Taylor K. Mejia. You can tell I, I like tabbed some of my favorite passages because I just wanted to be able to go back and read them over and over and over again. Ugh, I am chaos personified. It's one of my favorite lines that I've read in a while. This is the sequel to We Set the Dark on Fire. We Set the Dark on Fire is a queer Latinx dystopian that takes place in this world where affluent men are given two wives, a primera and a segunda. Um, Danny, whom is the protagonist in We Set the Dark on Fire, is set to be the primera of the most influential young man in the country. Country? City state? I don't exactly know what to call it. Country? I'm going to call it country for ease. Um, and ends up in the middle of the revolution. There's female-female romance, there is espionage, there is some badass queer and Latinx, um, Latino-Latina representation. It's phenomenal. This one is the sequel to that. Um, I always never, I always never, ugh, I never want to like, I always feel bad talking about what sequels are about because I feel like it kind of spoils the first book. In this one, we follow Carmen, who is the segunda partner, I'm going to say, of Danny. And we still get some badass female-female romance. We still get some badass espionage spy shit going on. Five out of five, favorite book of the year, one of my favorite books of all time. And then the last thing that I completed... <laughs> during the Read Your Gaze Readathon was Fence, Volume 1 by C.S. Picot, um, illustrated by Joanna Mad and colored by Joanna La Fuente, I do believe. Yeah, hopefully I did mess that up. I'm obsessed with this. I ordered every other volume on the market. They're also coming out with a YA, like, written novel. Um, that is like a novel version of the graphic novels, and I've pre-ordered that. I am on fence. I am like on it. I'm, I'm on it. Um, C.S. Picot is the author of The Captive Prince, the trilogy, I think, um, which I haven't read, but now that I've fallen in love with this, maybe I will. It didn't sound like something I would like. Um, I thought about reading the first one for when I did my Chandler Ainsley readathon back in readathon, reading Chandler Ainsley's favorites. Wow, I cannot talk today. Um, and I did that back in, what was it, February was when that came out. I'll link that down below too if you want to watch it. I almost read The Captive Prince for that, so maybe I'll have to pick it up. This, we follow Nicholas, who is a, the illegitimate child of a, world famous fence a retired world famous fencing champion and he this is not nicholas and he 
wants to follow in his dad's footsteps. He wants to also be a world-renowned fencer. So that is, this is his story. Um, eventually, it is male-male romance. It was not quite male-male. There is no male-male romance in the first volume, which is fine. Um, we still got queer going on. It's We love it. It's so good. The art... I don't want to show you, like, anything that's a huge spoiler. Do we have, like... I guess I could show you some of the covers. Look at how stunning this art is. Look at it. I'm obsessed. Obsessed. I'm in love with it. Five out of five stars. One of my favorite graphic novels I've ever read. Can't wait to read the rest of them. Alrighty, then in the next part of the month, we went um, ham with the thrillers. Sorry, I'm staring at my stack. And I'll tell you those in order. First, we have The Guest List by Lucy Foley, which I gave five out of five stars. Um, I had a really fun time. So all these colored tabs were me guessing, because it's a whodunit. I was guessing who was murdered and who the killer was. This book is set up in a really interesting way. First of all, it takes place during a wedding weekend on this spooky island off the coast of Ireland. And um, a good handful of people in the wedding party and the wedding planner, because the wedding planner is not technically in the wedding party. So like four of the people in the wedding party. So the bride, the, the bride, the bride, the plus one, the bride's, the maid of, the maid of honor, the bridesmaid, and the best man, and then the wedding planner, all have motives and a reason to kill. But the thing that's fun about how this book is set up is that you don't know who gets murdered, which is fun. You know there's a dead body in like the first two pages, but you don't know who it is until about um, here, <laughs> the very end. And it was so much fun because I was like, wow, I don't know who I think it is? Specifically because I don't know who was murdered. I was sitting there and I was being like, like on those wee sticky notes that says like, if Jules, then William. Or like, if Roger, that's a made up name, then Olivia. Like I was, it was so much fun. It was a blast. And I have had the hunting party on my like want to read list for some months. And I'm definitely going to pick that out now. Um... And if I like that one, Lucy Foley might end up being an Instabuy author for me. Speaking of Instabuy authors, the next thriller I read, Lock Every Door by Riley Sager, who is one of my Instabuy authors. I love Riley Sager. This book I've been wanting to read for a while. Um, I did a reading vlog where I read this and Home Before Dark, which I will link down below if you want to watch it so you can see my responses and reactions specifically to Home Before Dark. There's more Home Before Dark than there is lock every door in the vlog, but it was so much fun to read. Um, every Riley Sager, in a lot of ways, is better than the last. This one, we follow a young woman in New York City who um, has been laid off and gets this opportunity of a lifetime sort of deal where she's going to apartment sit at the Bartholomew, which is one of the most renowned apartment buildings in New York City. But once she moves in, she finds that not everything is exactly as it seems at the Bartholomew. Um, thrillery shit begins. A lot of people say that their favorite thing about this story is the haunted housey vibes. I didn't get very many haunted housey vibes. I liked it because I really enjoyed picking up on all of the fun little breadcrumbs. I actually knew how this book ended before I read it. I got spoiled on accident. It was my fault. I didn't heed a spoiler warning well enough. Um, but it was really actually very fun because I knew how it ended. I was like picking up on all of the foreshadowing and it was an absolute blast. And then of course we have Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. This is Riley Sager's newest release. It just came out on the 30th of June. Um, I got it early because it was my book of the month. This one is so much fun. We follow Maggie, who is a young woman who, um, when she was a young child, her family moved into this house called Bainbury Hall in Vermont, I think. Um, and they only lived there for 20 days before fleeing in the middle of the night. And then her father wrote this like 
best-selling non-fiction memoir type thing about their stay in Bainbury Hall. And Maggie doesn't remember any of the things that happened in the book, so she thinks it's all bullshit. And after her father's passing, she goes back to Bainbury Hall to uncover her past once and for all. Five out of five stars. This one has haunted spooky house vibes, and it was a blast because if you don't know me um, or my like reading tastes very well, the thing that scares me the most in thrillers is paranormal, ghost, haunted house, that kind of stuff. It spooks me. So five out of five stars. Absolutely loved it. Oh, and as I talked about at the beginning, I read like five LGBT books, LGBT plus books. So that's that card. Check. Um, so read a classical, go back in my jar. And then next, I read The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. I read this for a... This is on a secret TBR that I've been working on for a little bit. Not well, but I've been working on for a little bit. Um, ooh. But I feel confident talking about one of the books. That's fine. It, it's whatever. I have to say three out of five stars. I think it was way overhyped. I actually didn't like... I mean, it was, like, fun. I read it in almost one sitting, so it isn't like I disliked it. I just thought it was nothing to write home about. It was... I liked the format. I liked that the entire story was um, the protagonist telling the story from prison, which you know on the first page. This is not a spoiler. You know it on the first page. That someone... She was a nanny. Someone died she got sent to prison for it. And she's writing to a lawyer, um, trying to get him to help her and pleading and promising that she's innocent and then telling her story. Everyone says that this is like the scariest, creepiest, like most atmospheric book ever. Highly disagree. Um, <laughs> I didn't, I wasn't spooked or uncomfy a single time. I did like the atmosphere of the like smart house going on because she nannies at this house where everything is like automated so like weird things are happening with the technology I didn't think it was scary at all it was like good it was good but I disliked or didn't care it's just the stakes while I logically knew that the stakes were high because the protagonist ends up going to prison I literally literally did not care the whole time I just didn't care the stakes felt so low it was weird. Was not a huge fan. Sorry if I just broke everyone's heart. And then the last two books. I hope I didn't miss anything. I'll have to double check. The last two books that I read were Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Lightning Thief, and The Sea of Monsters. I actually didn't read these last. I read them like interspersed. But good, good, good shit. Um... I love Percy Jackson and the Olympians. I actually, this month in July, have read the third one, and I do plan on finishing the series this month. So, good, great as always. Landing Thief is five stars. Sea of Monsters is four stars. That's all I got. Um, I do have a, I'm doing a reading vlog for the series, so that'll be up at some point, hopefully later this month. Can't wait to share with you that super fun experience. Yeah. Yeah, so those are the 12 books that I managed to get through in June. I'm sitting at 57 out of 75 on my reading goal right now. So I'm definitely going to hit 75 by the end of the year, which I'm really excited about. Um, this is the most books I've ever read in a year. Ever, I think, in my entire life. Except for maybe when I was very wee, very little. But yeah, um, thank you for hanging out with me. I will see you guys very soon. My video for tomorrow, um, I highly, highly recommend you check it out because I have some exciting, exciting news. Yes. Goodbye, friends. I will see you soon.